What's up everyone, welcome to Workshop Rebuild. In today's episode, I'll be working on the John Deere 300 Garden Tractor Hydraulic Motor, which I have disassembled on the table in front of me here. This hydraulic motor here happens to be a Sunstrom Model 15 U-Pump. There are two different pumps Sunstrom makes in the Model 15. One is the U-Pump and one is the inline, but I will be covering the U-Pump today. I have all the parts laid out on the table here, as well as some products that I will be using in today's video. I have a digital vernier over there, so I can share with you guys a better insight on some of the seals and O-rings I will be using today. Speaking of the O-rings and seals, as well as one of the gaskets, which I have right here, this gasket I made myself. Um, this is the exact same thickness and size of the old one, so I cut this out myself. The O-rings, I measured up the old ones, and then I found new ones. And the seals, I did the same thing. I measured up the old ones and purchased new ones. So if you guys click that link down below for the O-rings and seals, it'll give you the exact measurements for them. Um, I have also the hydraulic filter listed, and I also have some pins listed as well. So in that link down below, it'll cover most of the products that you'll need for this rebuild today. Without further ado, let me give you guys a detailed view on everything that's on this table here, and then we'll dig right into the reassembly. this front section over here if you like the content you're seeing please leave a like down below consider subscribing for new content so without further ado let's get back to the video i have all the fittings laid out right here and i have the wrenches that i'll be using one is 5 8 the other one is 11 16 one is 22 millimeter and then i have one more which is one inch these wrenches will suit all your needs for all these fittings right here now if i flip this around right here you guys will see the location for the oil filter is on the bottom of this section of the hydraulic motor right here and the top has the charge pump so i will start off with the smaller fittings and then work my way up to the bigger fittings uh, i believe that will be the best way but i'll start on the bottom first right away and i will be using the two plugs which are more or less just drain plugs but they're also just blind plugs so these two will be located right here on the bottom and one will go right into here like so and the other one on the other side right here and for this one I will use the 22 millimeter wrench and these fittings right here, uh, you want to make them really snug, but as you're tightening them, you want to also make sure that the O-ring is seated properly. You do not want the O-ring to somehow come out, so then when you tighten it, you would cut the O-ring or damage it. You want to really make sure that the O-ring is seated properly in the taper. The next fitting that will be on the bottom is the oil pickup line. And that is this bigger fitting right here. For this, I will be using 
the one inch wrench and this is located at the very bottom here. Same thing with this one, you want to make sure that when you tighten that o-ring that it doesn't get damaged in any way. So when you tighten that just gently, you want to go all the way around and make sure that o-ring is seated properly. So that seems very good. Now we can continue. Okay, right there. And now I can tighten it. You really want to make sure that these fittings <laughs> are tight. You don't want to you don't want them to come loose. Next up, I'll move on to the top end of this section. I will grab the two check relief valves here. And one of them will be on the side, which is from this side. And one of them will be on the top over here. Um, when I took them out, I marked them so I know where they go. One is S, which is the side, and one is T, which is the top. And the top one, as you guys can see, has a smaller but stronger spring and the one on the side has a longer but a little bit weaker spring. Um, I just, I believe that's the way they are originally and when you do want to rebuild these, uh, I will not change these right now because they are still in very good condition. Um, if you guys see any damage to these, this could be an issue why your motor or hydraulic pump may not be working because of these springs right here. So I will start with the top one first right here. And what I will do is I will grab my automatic transmission fluid right here. I will add automatic transmission fluid to this bore right here. So everything is lubed up nicely before I assemble anything. The first thing that I'll drop in is the valve itself. So I will make sure that this is seated properly when I drop it in here like this, and I can use the brush to just uh, guide it down there. Just like that. Now I'm gonna add some more automatic transmission fluid right on top of the valve. Then I'll add the spring, just like that right there. And then I will grab the fitting itself. I'm gonna make sure that the O-ring is seated properly right here. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of automatic transmission fluid around this where the seal is right back there. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this is that the spring is inside of the fitting and I'm going to tighten this down by hand first and for that I'm going to be using the 5 8 wrench right here as well as on this fitting make sure that the o-ring is seated properly before you go and tighten it up all the way. Okay, just like that. Now I can take the box end of the wrench and give that a snug fit. That seems good. And now that is the top pressure relief valve. And now I can do the side. The side is the exact same thing, just that the side one has the weaker or longer spring right here. And we're gonna tighten these down nicely here. Once they're in. Flip it around, that'll be a little bit easier. Okay, that right there is all tight. And now I'm gonna set this aside and I'll come back to this in a few minutes. To finish up with the front section on the hydraulic motor over there, I'll leave that away for the moment. And now I can move on to the back end of the motor. The next thing I will be doing is adding all three seals on this part over here. And then on the charge pump, I'm gonna have to add one more seal as well. And that's where four seals come in play. The link is in the description down below so you guys can find the measurements on the seals so you can purchase them on your own. Um, two seals are exactly the same size and the other two seals are the exact same size. 
and therefore we have four. I will be installing these four seals off camera, but I'll show you guys the end result. Um, these seals right here have a, a Loctite strip around them. Uh, I don't really trust that, so what I do, I just take a blue thread Loctite and give it a little coat around the perimeter of the seal, so I know that the outside diameter is sealed properly. The seal on the internals will always have to be greased, and therefore, when you guys assemble it, it has to be checked and made sure that the spring is properly in place and also that the lift is not folded over. So there's always something to look for when you're installing seals. I was able to push in all the seals with Loctite around the perimeter of the seal without damaging anything. So now all four seals are seated properly right here. This one has three in the housing. So one on the top for the main shaft and two on the sides right here, one and two. And then the fourth one is over here on the charge pump right there. So our, all four seals are seated properly and now we can move on to the assembly of the rear end of this hydraulic motor. On the table, I have all the parts laid out for the hydraulic motor and pump. I have the housing over here, and as you guys can see, the housing consists of two areas, the bottom end and the top end. The top end has a bigger area because we have a variable swash plate. This trunnion shaft over here connects then with the lever to select the hydraulic pump to go forward or backward. So, that's why that housing looks that way. But onto the parts themselves, we have the main drive shaft right here. Up above, I have the variable swash plate right here. Um, the two trillion shafts go inside of it like this, and we can then select going forward or going backward. And that's why uh, this plate is set up this way. And I have the two roll pins on either side I'll go over this once more when I install it, but all these parts, the way they're laid out, will be installed on the top end of this housing right here. And over to the right side, I have to install the washer that backs the barrel assembly with the pistons right here. And then we have the pump valve right here and this is on the top end so this is for the pump this on the top over here is for the bottom end of the pump and it consists basically of the same stuff we just have a fixed swash plate and we have a barrel assembly just like up above and this consists of the same amount of barrels or pistons excuse me as the bottom one and then we also have a pump valve for that as well. So all this in front of me here, I will be installing into this housing and I'll share with you guys step by step how to install it. A very important step that I would like to address before I install all this into the housing, the swash plate right here and the trunnion shafts will have to be, the trunnion shafts will have to be installed into this swash plate like so. And now to fix these trunnion shafts to the swash plate, we have four roll pins right here. The length on them are 5 8 and you do not want anything longer than 5 8 um, or else you will not be able to take this apart in the future if you have to do any repair. So um, the key to this is that you install the trunnion shaft into the swash plate and you have two of these roll pins which will be on either side of the either side of the trunnion shaft. So the bottom one that you will punch in first will have to be halfway into the bottom of the swash plate and then the other half will have to be inside of the trunnion and then the second one that you want to install will have to be on the top half of the swash plate and halfway into the trunnion shaft. So if these are 5 8 you want half of 5 8 in the swash plate and half of the 5 8 in the trunnion shaft. And that's why there are two, because when you punch these out in the near future to do a repair, um, you have to have enough room to push this out. If you only have one roll pin, 
um, it will not work. You will not be able to push it out. And therefore, there are always two on each side. So there are two pins for the right side of the trunion shaft and two pins on the left side of the trunion shaft. So this is very important. I will share with you guys how I install it and what the depth will be. Um, but I just wanted to share that with you guys before I install it into the housing. So the first thing that I will be installing into this housing right here is the main drive shaft. Um, I did keep the bearing on it because it's still in very good condition right here. I don't want to take it off the shaft or else I'll have to press it in afterwards and it'll just make it easier this way to just push it into the housing the way it is. But before I push it in to make sure that the seal is seated properly around the shaft, uh, I'm going to lube this shaft up and I'm also going to loop the inside of the seal up. I just installed the main drive shaft with the bearing down below and now I will be working on the swash plate next. The swash plate has a certain way to install it. On the back end over here, we have one area which is milled down on a angle. And then there is another angle on the top, but there is more material. So now when you look at it, you want the end with, which has more material on the top end of the pump and the bottom end, which has less material towards the bottom. And that's where I marked the L and the L is the side of the lever. So when you install it, you wanna make sure that the bottom end has less material and the top end has more material. It's really important to do it this way or else your movement on this variable swash plate right here will not be sufficient to give you enough forward movement and backward movement. So I'm gonna drop this in right here without touching anything. And now I'm gonna add the trunion shaft. I'm gonna grab the longer one first, and then I will insert the smaller one. I'm gonna go through into the bearing, but for that, I'm gonna use a little bit of assembly grease as well. I'm just gonna put some on my finger right here, and I'm gonna add it into the bearing and around the seal area on the far side where the lever is, just like that. And I'm gonna grab some more for the other side. I actually might just add some automatic transmission fluid around the bearing on the inside because the internals of this housing will be always filled with automatic transmission fluid or a, another hydraulic fluid that is of your preference that has something a similar consistency to the automatic transmission fluid. So get, add some of this onto the bearing. Just like that. And I'm gonna lube up the shaft as well, just so that'll make it easier for me to install. So like that, gonna put this aside. And I'm going to install the first shaft, which is the shaft for the lever. I really want to make sure that I don't damage the seal as I push this in. And then I also want to make sure that the bearing is nicely around the trunion shaft. Same thing on this side. I'm going to make sure that everything around the seal is done properly and that it goes into the bearing nice and smooth, just like that. And I wanna guide it into the swash plate also on this side right here. So it's not the easiest thing to show on camera, but this side of the trunion is almost where it should be. And the shaft needs to come in a little bit more. And if you guys can see right down there, it's almost aligned perfectly, but this side of the trunion still has quite a bit of distance to travel because that bore right there has to align 
with this bore on the swash plate. Okay, now I have the trunnion shafts on the right height according to the swash plate. And what I did right here, I took two punches and I put them on the correct height. And I'll take these out and I'll share with you guys how that should look like before we tap in these roll pins. And the bore is perfectly lined up on this side. And I'm going to add the punch back in there so it doesn't move. And this side as well, the trunnion is perfectly lined up with the bore right there. So now what I will do next is grab these focus, grab these roll pins over here. And I'm going to make sure that I tap them to the right depth. So the top and the bottom are touching the trunnion and the swash plate on both sides over here. And then I can locate this to the left and right. So I can add the washer and the retainer ring over here. And these pins should go in fairly easy and you always want to make sure that everything is moving. Uh, I'm just about halfway down right now. I really want to make sure that I don't overdo do it or go too far down. So what I will do is grab the vernier and I know I have to go to three quarter and I'm always going to give myself a measurement so I know how deep I am currently. So right there I'm about at three eighths. So I have about, I'm right at about at half. Another way you could do it if you do not have a vernier, you can just take your punch and add a piece of tape on the punch so you know at what depth you would like to stop. I'm a half inch right now. Six, eight. Now I want to be a little bit more careful, make sure I don't over tap this. Point seven one. And I should be there now. Point seven three. Two more taps. And I'm probably right there. 0.74, almost. Point seven five eight. I'm pretty happy with that right there. So if that's 0.758 and this is 0.62, a little bit more, 0.62. I'm gonna have to go 120, that will be my depth. So 0.12, I'm gonna put the second one in right away. I'm at point one right now, and now point two. That should be just about there. Point one one five. I'm gonna stop right there. 
because I don't want those two roll pins touching each other. So now I can take out the second punch and move on to this side. So right here, I have the final result. The trunian is hooked up with the two roll pins to the swash plate over here. And same as on this side, everything is perfect. Now what I have to do is take the swash plate and move it a little bit this way so I can install the washer and the retainer ring on both sides over here. Okay, and just like that, everything is installed and the side play should be very, very minimal. This is very tight right here, so that's very, very good. And now I'll move on to the next step and I'll share with you guys how to install the barrels, pistons and washers and the bottom end, which is the motor. After installing the swash plate and the main drive shaft on the top, I can now move on to the bottom area, which is the motor. There is this angled plate. Uh, I believe this is called the fixed swash plate, but I'm not quite sure on that. I didn't find a correct definition of this plate right here, but it will be inserted in the bottom area right here. The output shaft will have to get mounted first. So I will add some grease around the bearing fit. After I put in the output shaft, I can then put in the angled plate over here. And what you wanna do is make sure that the two threaded holes are towards the bottom of the pump. This right here is the bottom and this right here is the top. So when you look at it, you wanna be putting it in this way right here. And that means the thicker end is towards the bottom, just to make sure. So before I put in this shaft, I'm gonna add a whole bunch of assembly grease around that bearing fit right there. And just like that, I'm going to insert it into the bottom right here, making sure that it goes in nice and smooth. And I want to make sure that it turns very nicely. Okay, there's no restriction in there. And this is how it should look like from the, or on the back right here. This is the output shaft and this is the input shaft. So next up, I will be grabbing this fixed swash plate and I will insert it on the bottom here. It's not the easiest thing to install either, but it basically just slides in. So now, for this to get installed properly, I'm going to lay it down this way. The fixed swash plate is in there now, and these two bolts will fasten that to the housing. I will be using a drop of Loctite on both of these threads because I do not want that to come loose in the future. And I will do that right now. I'm just going to make sure there's enough Loctite. This is just a thread lock, so this can be taken apart very, very easily. I'm gonna thread these in by hand. They have to be threaded by hand first. Um, you do not want to cross thread this at all. So I'm gonna make sure that it's seated nicely in there. There is a little bit of play here, so I'm gonna have to make sure that it gets tightened up nicely here. I wanna make sure those are nice and snug. I don't want those coming off. And obviously the Loctite will help create a proper bond. Okay. Right up next, 
I can go ahead and look at the barrel assembly with the pistons right here, top and bottom, or hydraulic motor and hydraulic pump right here. The pump side has a washer and the pump side is where the variable swash plate is with the two trunion shafts. This is the top end of the pump and this is the bottom end of the pump. Um, for this, I might have to flip the casing around and then insert it, or insert it from the bottom. So it might be hard to see, but I'll give you guys the best shot I can get. And when I wanna assemble any of this right here, I'm going to add automatic transmission fluid to all these parts right here, because I wanna make sure they are properly lubricated before any part touches another part internally. So when I have this washer right here, I wanna lubricate the bottom and the top. And then when the pistons right here touch the washer, I wanna make sure that this is lubricated as well as the pump valve plate. I wanna make sure that this is lubricated to the barrel assembly. So everything that touches each other, I want lubed up before it goes into the housing. same procedure. I'm going to lay this on its side. That looked very good. I didn't even have to invert it completely. Just going to merge this. And just like that, I have both sides finished, bottom and the top right here, so everything is seated the way it should be. And next up I will be looking at the valve plates. This one is on the top and this one right here is on the bottom of this pump. So I'm going to make sure once again that everything right here is clean before I install anything. I'm gonna put some down these pockets right here where the cylinders move. So the cylinders are nicely looped up. Okay, and just like that, I will go ahead and put the top one on first, like that, making sure it's seated the way it should be, and the So I was able to finish the bottom half and the top half of this hydraulic pump and motor. Now I can move on to merge both halves together and for that I'll be using my homemade gasket which I have right here. This was made out of filing paper, it is a quality paper and it is a little bit thicker than the standard paper. I made this myself using the example of the old one that was on here and I did dry fit it before and it fits perfectly. Now. 
For this gasket right here, I will use the thinnest layer of UTV sealant along this gasket right here. I'm just going to take a little bit on my finger and just rub it on the gasket. I'm going to make sure that these two halves merge very soon after that. And I'm going to give you guys a close-up view right here on how the bolts will be assembled. There are some different heads on these bolts. Um, two of the bolts on the very bottom have nuts and there are some different sizes. So I'm going to give you guys a top view over here and then we'll merge these two halves together. So the gasket I have cut out will weigh on this surface over here. There are two dowel pins on the top and bottom which have to be in place before we merge both halves. So these are in place and they are not moving. That's a really good sign. If they have too much wear, these would have to be replaced or even the bores would have to be made bigger. On this side of the hydraulic motor, there are two dowel pins as well. One is here in the middle and one is closer to the top. And now when we merge these two halves together, you guys can see there is a cutout right here on this pump valve. And there is another one on the bottom over here, another cutout right here. So these two pins or dowel pins right here will have to be recessed in these grooves over here on the pump valves. That's very important. So when we merge it, um, it will compress a little because these are spring loaded right here, but these dowel pins must be in the area of this groove. Now, since the parts or the housings are close to each other, I will go down here and make sure that these dowel pins will align perfectly. Okay, that right there is in place. Now I'm going to add the bolts. On the top left, we have the Torx. On the top, <clears throat> on the top left, I have the bolt with the washer, and on the top right, I have the bolt without the washer. And then on the bottom, I have the two bolts, which each have a nut. So those nuts will be used uh, a little bit later. And we connect it to, I successfully tightened the top half to the bottom half of the motor. All eight bolts are in place and they're tightened. I do not have any torque spec on these bolts right here. I just went ahead and tightened them as best as I could because I want this gasket and the gasket material to hold in the oil within the hydraulic motor. The next thing I will be installing is this charge pump right here. This is the housing. This is the gear pump itself. We have 
a connector pin right here. This will connect through the drive shaft. And we have two bolts as well as the O-ring. For the housing, it's very important to place this the way it came off the motor. Um, I believe you can rotate it right or left. So it depends uh, which application you're going for. I have over here a little T marked which way I took it off, but there is another indicator uh, which way this was connected before. If you look at this closely, you can see that the circle that is milled out over here on this casting is closer to one end. So it is the distance right here is closer than the distance to this bore. I'll give you guys a rough measurement right here. This right here is about 0.4 of an inch. And over here on this side, we have about 0.57. So it is off to one side over here. And now when I look at the housing, you guys can see there's a outline and this mark is much closer to the end of this than it is from here over here, as well as the bore to this outline is this distance is larger than from this point to this point. So as you guys can see, the bore for the shaft is in the middle, but this is off to the right. And that's very important to notice because when you look at this as well, um, it would be placed this way and that that's how it should be right there. So that's very important to take note uh, when you're putting this back together for the John Deere 300 series um, that you put this housing the correct way. To install the pump, the first thing I will be doing is taking this hardened steel pin over here. I have this in the link in the description down below as well. I'm gonna insert this through the shaft and make sure that it's sticking out on both sides. Then I will take the gear itself and place that down below. Before I do that, I will add a little bit of this ATF again, automatic transmission fluid right here along the surfaces because this pump will pump with automatic transmission fluid. So now once this is the way I like it, I'm going to place that down on there. And just like that, there is a little bit of play and that's due to the pin size to the shaft. Uh, the bore is not worn, but that's just how it is. Now I can go ahead and it's really important to keep this the same way it was. So I'm gonna lay this down right here. I'm gonna make sure that this moves freely and I'm gonna leave it in the correct position somehow like that. And as well, I'm gonna add automatic transmission fluid along this gear right here. Um, this will be pumping oil very soon. So I'm not too worried. Um, it is possible to get a little bit thicker grease in case uh, I wouldn't be pumping. You can uh, take this cover off and add a little bit of thicker grease just to get it pumping. Next up, I'll grab the assembly grease and I'll add some along the O-ring. I need to loop this up that it doesn't, or that it lasts much longer. After it's looped up, I will place it inside of the housing, something like that right there. Now I can take this and I will add ATF along the bearing inside of this housing. Very important to lube everything up because uh, there is no lube in this system yet. So it's very important to do so. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of assembly grease for around the seal here so we don't damage those lips as we insert the shaft right there. Now we're gonna gently push it onto the seal like that and slowly work it down. 
And as I bring it down, I want to make sure that it's in line with the bolt holes. So I can go ahead and tighten these two bolts up right here. Want to make sure it's seated properly and in the middle I, I, I don't like so much play because there is a, a seal right here and usually it should be placed a little bit better than that just making sure that that seal is all the way around the shaft just like that I'm gonna tighten it down Making sure that's really tight. I don't think you can overdo these bolts anyways, but it's important to keep them tight. So I just finished the assembly on the Sunstrand Series 15 hydraulic motor, which will go into my John Deere 300 garden tractor. I'm super satisfied with the outcome on this rebuild. I really like to have everything clean. It's really important for a hydraulic motor to be that way, but I really like to have everything clean, have all the tools sorted out and all the products that I need so I can just go after it and also share this content with you guys so it's also very understandable and very easy to see as a viewer. The seals that I listed down below, the o-rings and the pins all fit perfectly within this hydraulic motor and some of the products right here are readily available so you guys can go out there and rebuild one of these yourselves, hopefully with help of this video. I could mount the hydraulic filter onto the pump over here but I think it'll be a little bit easier to mount it onto the rear axle first and then I'll have enough room to screw that on by hand. So I'm going to wrap up this video right here. If you guys enjoyed the content you saw right here please give this video a thumbs up. It helps my channel massively. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and as always stay tuned.